Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Rome Total War Remastered here today on the channel. We're back with episode 5 of my RTR Imperium Serectum Roman Republic campaign. We're back on RIS. This is episode 5. In today's episode, we're going to build the biggest fort wall the world has ever seen. So if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. Okay, so also I think we have a large enough army now to make a play into Masana and try and retake the city we have lost. I've skipped a little bit ahead just to build up a bit. Cess Alpine Gaul is fully under our control. We traded quite hard in Sicily, but now we've got an army to hopefully retake it back. Um, we've finally got a decent economy going as well. We're building nearly a building in every single settlement, which is good. We've got traders, we've got roads coming in, and I've also set up these boys as well with their orders to build out some forts, because I want to protect my northern border. Now, there's a lot of ways into northern Italy, and this will also deter... Um, for example, barbarian spawning. Unfortunately here, we, we're not going to have enough room. So we're going to build a fort wall in all of these borders. And I'll make sure to garrison some Roman, I guess, watches here as well. So we'll send everyone north. And once this is built and fully constructed, I'll keep a small army here in the north to deal with any roaming barbarians, Greeks or Gauls, and we'll send everyone else down south to fully focus on conquering Sicily. So it's always worth doing this. Fourth Wars, particularly in these earlier Total Wars, can be a massive advantage for you. It also will stop, obviously, rebel spawning, like I said, but it'll also stop them from, like, raiding and pillaging my lands as well. It'll also reduce public order if they come in, or reduce the ability for them to decrease my own public order. And it'll also give us a really nice line of sight as well to protect the north while we focus on other fronts. So there it is, the biggest <laughs> fort wall we've built in the game. Oh, I love playing as Rome, building forts and roads. <laughs> it's always really quite enjoyable. Okay, taxes-wise as well, they're a little bit unhappy in the north here, so we're going to have to reduce it just because we have to move our forces out. But man, oh man, I've been loving this mod so much. Huge shout-out to, of course, Feral, who... Did the Rome remaster, and of course the guys that um made this mod team. Go check out their Discord. It's a really great community over there. They've really outdone themselves. Uh, I've been playing this for hours, <laughs> non-stop. This new version point three updated version is fantastic. I'm loving it so so much. It's really quite enjoyable and satisfying. Okay, so we've been attacked here by Carthage. They don't want us to retake Masana. Okay, we've got uh, Lucius Cornelius Scipio, who's 45. He's a five-star commander. Let's fight this one on the battlefield here today. Let's do just a quick save. And let's dive on in. Whew. It's going to be a lot of fun. Man, it's been a bit of a struggle, this campaign. We've been trading back and forth down in Sicily. And we had to fully retreat from the island. Just because we were just so outnumbered, even though we won nearly every battle. Up in the north, we conquered Cessalpine Gaul. Alright, Romans, friends, fellow countrymen, lend me your ears. Let's go smash some Carthaginians, eh? <laughs> okay, so, terrain-wise, looking at the topography of this battle map, nothing too crazy. We're finally fighting a defensive battle with a decent army. We haven't had, like, a proper Roman army, to my liking, in this entire series until now. 
So we're going to be able to adopt the triple axis formation, which I've been wanting to do. We've got enough. And particularly when we're defending as well. I did use the tactics a lot in my, well, original Imperium Serectum campaign on just the vanilla version without the brand new campaign map. So we've got our own reinforcements coming in, but they've got some of their own as well. So we've got ours coming from the right. Okay. Oh, they've got some coming from the left. Hang on, hang on. Reform up. Yeah, go for that. Even though it's a spear unit, probably. It's the um, general unit. If we can get it, we might be able to cause a huge morale debuff to them. So here are the Hastati, the Villates in the second line. And the Roman cavalry is going to charge on in. Okay, make sure to peel off as well. But yeah, just reflecting on this campaign. I've played for like... Uh, this will be the fifth hour I've put into this campaign. And I'm only like... Uh, 20, 25 turns into it. We've only just conquered Cess Alpine Gaul. And now, hopefully we can take Sicily. It's like, it, it doesn't seem grindy, but for our campaign, like, taking territory progression, I guess it kind of is, but it's just like, it's so good, man. So, a bit of a tip as we charge on into this general unit, hopefully we didn't lose someone then. No, it's the enemy general, perfect. As we just wait for the Carthaginian um, army to move up. Yeah, so we started off this campaign incredibly early on with basically two armies. We sent one in the north to deal with rebel territory, and then we sent one down to deal with the Battle Royale, which is the Greek and Carthaginian sort of Punic War for Sicily. And even though we won basically every single battle there, apart from a, a, cup, apart from a couple tactical retreats, we just traded way too hard. Um with them <laughs> to make any progression so although we won every battle it was at a great cost as we're just currently trading some skirmisher fire here hopefully they charge into my Astarte so I can do some uh, hammer and anvil strikes I might actually slightly move up a bit as well because we're actually out of range compared to them get ready to cycle charge there so a bit of word of advice in your Roman campaign early on I wouldn't even bother about Sicily unless you can get two full stacks you might be able to if you play on easy to medium but I'm very hard you, you just you, you don't have the funds to or maybe you can be like an like a legend of total war let's say maybe you're really good at keeping your casualties low because I don't seem to be <laughs> my casualties are quite high but even in this we're probably gonna lose a decent amount because these guys only a Hastati and we're just gonna trade but we will be able to take Masana and probably hold it a lot better because, oh, we're going to get caught here. The General's bodyguard early on aren't the strongest. Hastati are okay, but they're nowhere near on the level of Prinkapes. I feel like the um, the units in this mod are really balanced at the moment. Whoever did the balancing has probably done a pretty good job for Rome, I'd say. There might be one unit that I'm not... I don't know. That's, like, really overpowered at the moment. But, obviously... Rome is nearly too powerful of a faction in vanilla Rome Remastered. Like, they just, all the, both the fact of the three factions, rather, just snowball. So, I, I would nearly recommend, if you don't have two armies, nearly don't worry about Sicily. <laughs> Normally, you can kind of rush it in these um, other total wars and then claim it for your own. But in this, the new updated version of the mod, you do struggle. But now we're at a stage where we've taken what, Umbria, the eastern part of Italy, we've taken Cess Alpine Gaul, we've built up some defensive forts, so we're not going to get attacked in the north. We're putting a lot of money into our economy, finally. So we're going to be able to support um, not just this stack, but like more stacks in the future as well. So I, I think I'll sort of ignore Gaul and potentially Greece for now and Illyria. We're going to chuck everything into Sicily and controlling it. Okay. So even though now we're winning this one, the Carthaginians are just trading so hard with us. But we held up at Regium. Thankfully, they didn't march everything over once Sicily fell. But we're also fighting on a two front here with Carthage and the Greeks. We might have bit off a little bit more than we can choose. So we're doing our right here for now. My generals did take a little bit of a battering because they just got caught there from that crazy charge. Okay. So we'll drop a rally. And let's go swing on in. So how are we going? We lost 40%. But deployment-wise, 
It's quite even. Okay. Because I feel like even when we're fighting barbarians, the Celtic swordsmen are really quite good. Obviously, the spearmen had a buff, but the swordsmen it can be pack a punch quite a bit. But Carthage should have a really good roster, if not one of the better in the game. Like their swordsmen, their spearmen. The Greeks have had fantastic cavalry and hoplites. We probably actually should do so with some more villites or something. But the problem is we're not going to be able to take settlements if we don't have Astarte. But to be fair, we're still pretty early on in the campaign. We haven't hit any Marian reforms just yet. We still need to wait until we get the population big enough in one city on the Italian peninsula, which we might do sooner than later. Okay, so we're just grinding things out here. There's three blobs. We'll try and cycle charge some cavalry in. Let's see if we get lucky. The enemy general's routing. Perfect. They're now gone. And we've, non we've won another great victory against Carthage. And we've retaken Masana for the second time. If we can run everyone down, we should be able to march and really waltz on in in the city. Hey, let's just continue to run them down. But, um, anyway as well, even in the north, it did take us a little bit longer to really consolidate. Arguably, we still haven't, because we've got those public order difficulties. So... I'm just trying to think what we should do for this campaign. Like, if we can take Sicily, I guess we focus on Carthage. Taking Carthage will be really quite crucial. Maybe Sardinia and Corsica as well as a bit of a buffer zone. That also might control a bit more trade in the med. So, they actually outnumbered us by uh, about 500 or so. So, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, my cavalry did most of the work, along with the Hastati. But to start this episode off, we've had a really good victory against the Carthaginians. But we lost half of our forces in the process. But now we can take and hold Masana with at least half a stack. Okay, so let's enslave again and we'll disperse the population back into our Roman territory. Oh, it's actually flipped over to Eastern, which is interesting. We'll get you married off as well. Uh, civil disorder. Ah, oh, okay. Civil disorder in the north. That's fine. There's also been a flash flood in southern France by the look of it. Okay, we do have some slight civil disobedience up in the north, along with some really just public discontent and bad public order. We'll try and send some of the forces back to the cities just to quell it a bit, but. Only time will change it and drop it down. Alrighty, so I've sent my diplomat super far east. We've met the Thracians. We've actually arrived at Bithynia, Nicomedia. They're currently under siege. Unfortunately, we can't get through there, but we can negotiate with Pergamon. So I would like map for map, as we already have trade with them if we can. Okay. Maybe Pontus. Trade and map. Oh, perfect. We're finding out who is occupying these territories in the known world. And, oh, Armenia as well. Let's do the same if we can. Because that will really help our economy if and when going forward. Oh, no! Unfortunately, at the top of the turn, Gaius Slips... Uh, is it Slepsina? Klepsina, that's it. Klepsina, that's how you say it. Gaius Klepsina is no more. Oh, that's a shame. And Lucius Metellus is now the faction leader. Okay, so what we're going to have to do there is re-garrison the fort so we don't lose it. Okay, we're just burning through the turns here now. We've actually found the Bosphorus Kingdom, which is cool. And we should be able to as well. Continue eastward after establishing uh, trade and map information with them. We've got here the Seleucids as well. 
But yeah, we're just putting money into our economy. We're just burning some turns. Very we're building up in Masada and also in the north also. as well. We are turtling a little bit, but if we do get attacked or we march upon anyway, we'll hopefully have another battle in today's episode soon. Man, the Galatians are not looking healthy. My god, they're getting smashed by the Seleucids and Pontus as well. well we'll head you down to Egypt. Okay, so we are stabilizing up here in the north, and we've also managed to put most of my army on this eastern, uh, sorry, western front here. So, most of my forts are occupied by someone, but this is also massive as well. This will stop any um, faction sieging these northern territories and hampering our funds. So, I think we're in a good position now to send an army south. Uh, we need additional reinforcements to help out in Sicily. And we'll send everyone down where we can. Or we'll make our way. We're just holding here in Masana. After losing those troops in that earlier battle, we want to build back up to at least a full stack before we advance into Syracuse and into the western coast of... Sicily. Actually, you know what? Your Honor, watch. We might actually be able to make a play here. Because they've got an army sitting on the outskirts. Oh, hang on. Is there a Carthaginian army in striking range, though? 19's not too bad. 18, will we move you back? Got a bunch more generals in here now. So there's one that I recently moved in. Which one is it? It's that one. So... If we attack this... Oh, no, that's doable. Alright, let's push into Syracuse with Lucius Metellus, the new faction leader. Ready to make a name for himself. Brave men are a city's strongest tower of defense. Okay. We definitely needed to hear that. Defending Masana. There stand the Greeks, ready to fight... Or die. Today, I think we should send as many of them as possible to Hades. This army is fully one quarter of all our warriors. Imagine how we look to our enemies and take heart from that thought. Our people expect great things of us, and we are the men to do great things. They have been led here by strutting fools and blustering morons. Now they will pay the price. Why do they stand? They must have barely a fraction of our men. We should brush them aside easily and claim victory. Our many horsemen will have good hunting today, as the enemy is weak in spearmen to counter them. I have never yet lost a fight against these men. I have no intention of starting today. So together, we will gain another victory. Now then, look to your front. Mark your target when it comes! All right, let's send these Greeks to Hades, I guess. Lucius Metellus has never lost a battle against them. So hopefully we can keep that the same. All right, let's go with triple axis formation as always, boys. We have a bunch of cavalry in this build. I do want to as well, once we, like, stabilize the peninsula, I want to have at least... The generals that have high management and influence actually be governors in settlements, while we have very few, like, acting military class that are, like, the good commanders. So here is our cavalry of the Roman Republic, looking to try and claim our second settlement in Sicily. Hopefully we can here today. Astarte and our Villates. But check out the battle map for this one. There's a, a really cool-looking vineyard here as well. And then we've got Syracuse in the distance. So they're taking the high ground here up on the vineyard, which is interesting. We'll have to rotate and ascend because we are attacking them at the end of the day. Okay, so we've got some different crops here. And we've got to watch out for their fantastic Greek cavalry. It's always been a problem in this series. So we're currently under the reign of our second faction leader, Lucius Metellus. Our first faction leader, of course, 
Gaius Slipsina was the conqueror of that eastern part of Italy. Was it Umbria? Yeah, he conquered those rebel territories. He pushed north as well and conquered the Inserbri and Cisalpine Gaul. So that was really his accomplishment, bringing the entire northern provinces under heel. And unfortunately, he died of old age. I want to try and track as well, actually, my generals in their deeds. And say, oh, this general did that. This general had battle experience from this war. So hopefully, with our new faction leader, Lucius Metellus, he will be able to be the unifier of Sicily. Okay. So it's a little bit hard to see here, as they're making a pretty decent position here up on the top of this estate. We're moving in our flying triple axis formation. And let's maybe flank with my cavalry to get them out of this position. Mm. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off. We might just have to fully send it up this hill. They are clustering quite well. They're intertwining their spears and cavalry. They probably have the skirmisher range on us. That has been something we've been lacking. Like, decent archers. In this build. Of our Roman army comps. Alright, looks like we might be able to get some peeler shots off here. As we're fighting in the... Grain field here. Oh my god. What a cool looking battle map. Okay, so we'll try and hit these skirmishers here. Right, just send all the cavalry in, because they're not going to be able to wrap around fully. Okay, so now they're actually hitting my front line. My Hastati are holding for now, but check this out. Initial charge did like 50%. Hastati, you, you got to be wary if you do play this mod. They're nowhere near as strong as vanilla Hastati. And can tank. The Prinkipes are pretty much bang on. Like, they are very, very similar. But, um, yeah, overall, there are some differences in these units, but so far, hold the front line, cycle our way on in, or be very, very careful. No, we lost someone. Far out. <laughs> oh. It wasn't Metellus, though, thankfully. We've lost a lot of generals in this series. I might have to do, like, an episode where I go through absolutely everyone. All the records. In a time of peace. Okay. Oh, no. Marcus Metellus. A relation of Lucius. Oh, that's a shame. I'm sure he's going to be spurred on here. Yeah, it's just these uh, spearmen are really hard to break down. We'll go for the general unit now. We've yet to take out theirs, and we have finally. The enemy general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. Just going to be super careful charging on in. Because the generals can be a little bit blobby. There we go. Okay, we need to start flanking with some of these Astarte, because you can clearly see there's like five Astarte units being held off against like one Hoplite unit. Dude, they are very hard to break on through. I might need to request a, a changelog for all the units, because I am learning on the fly with you guys as well, like how good units are. Okay. Because we are losing quite a lot as we advance. Maybe go with a wedge and might be able to break this if we're lucky. Just change up the tactics because doing what we were doing before wasn't working. There we go. Okay, maybe we need to use wedge a bit more because it did work out in the um, other fight we had in and around Sicily. There we go. 
Yeah, I think it just gives that extra um, charge and stat bonus. I don't tend to use Wedge that much. But against these Hoplites, it's actually kind of needed. And there goes the two enemies, generals that have fallen. And one for ours. Awesome. Another glorious victory for the Roman Republic. Oh, as the seasons change as well. Clear victory. And now we can march upon Syracuse with impunity. And take the city. But we do have to be sort of careful in the way we progress here. We're going to have to replenish and repair and hold up. Uh, that's a shame. Marcus Metellus was his third born son. Okay, so we're going to be able to move into Syracuse now because we've defeated the uh, garrison there. Perfect. We're finally making some progression in Sicily. It took a while. We just had to build up properly. But yeah, although like we traded back and forth, we didn't ab we weren't able to um, sort of hold the territory that we took early on down here. It's fine because it bought my other armies enough time to take five settlements in the north, and we're now really benef benefiting from it. And now with Masana and Syracuse under our control, we're bringing even more monies and funds to the Roman Empire, and we've got uh, the Republic. We're not the Empire just yet. And we'll send on over. So, they do have an army here, but look, we, we, we can probably... Unless they move absolutely everything out, we should be able to hold from here now. After our victories. But to be fair, we did actually smash a lot of their armies as well. So, what we'll do is we'll send you down south. Um, and we'll try and pick up as many units on the way as well. But this is what we currently own. In the campaign. And we've it's really been quite hard fought, <laughs> to be honest. But we own most of the Italian peninsula, or well, all of it, bar Sicily. Which is fully under Carthaginian control. So we're only at war with the Carthaginians and Greeks for now. Okay, we finally made our way to Egypt. We're negotiating with them in the Levant. So trade and map information will be brilliant. We can get that grain if we can. A most generous proposal. Okay, guys, welcome to the top of the turn. So, skipped a little bit ahead. Everything is stabilized in the north. We've got actually good public order here, which is fine. We do have some small units just defending those forts, but everything's been quite passive up there, which is perfect. We've got barracks coming along as well. I do want to try and get at least a, a reactionary force in the north, because if we do get attacked in one of those forts, it's only going to it's going to fall and then be a, a delaying tactic of anything. I'm throwing absolutely everything uh, where I can south. We've got half a stack still chilling at... Well, it's actually close to 16 at... Syracuse, we've also got more military forces heading to Regium as well. And I want to try and get to a point where we have maybe, let's say, uh, two stacks, maybe a little bit more before we push for the western side of the island once everyone's down here. So we're actually nearly ready to probably march on over because we've got three here now. But I've also gone around and moved my generals that don't have the highest command but they do have the management and whatnot, and we've put them all in Roman settlements, which will be perfect. That'll be really quite good. We'll build up their traits as well, and we'll only have a, a select few military commanders, because early on in the campaign, we actually desperately needed those cavalry. Now that we're making decent... Uh, money, and we've also got a decent amount of infantry that we can rely on. We don't have to rely on the cavalry class. Oh, wow. Pergamon has been destroyed. I wasn't expecting that. They got smashed. Okay. Carthage has moved up an army now to Masana. We've got a full stack in Syracuse. We've got a decent army in Masana. We do have a, a Numerius Valerius coming on in. 14 units there. I think we deal with that. They mustn't know that we've got this other army coming up. So we're going to be able to use the land bridge. And let's fight this one. Yeah. So let's march on over. Oh, they've pulled back. We'll move you further down as well. So now we have, wow, nearly three full stacks in Sicily. So now that we've stabilized a bit, we actually have the economy to sustain 
these units. Okay, so let's get stuck into the Republic of Carthage. And hopefully, if we can destroy this army, we should be able to march on through and conquer the rest of Sicily. Perfect. It's taken us a while to get to this stage where we can actually take territory off a major faction. Nearly six hours. <laughs> but it's alright. Okay, let's start the deployment. Man, I, I'm always so impressed with just that simple mechanic of the general speech. Like, if you really listen to it, it's really quite astute. And it's like a brilliant piece of coding as well. I, I, I still... It boggles the mind how they were able to sort of do that. So, for example, they know that this was the biggest army that I've ever assembled in the campaign. We've got a bunch of Prinkapes, four, that have come from Rome. We've got some better quality Villates as well. We've even got some Samnites coming up as well. Also, the fact that the enemy has the high ground. So, we've got to be careful for that as well. So, let's go with our checkerboard formation once again. And we've also got our ballista, which we can use in the open field. We did test around with it in Cisalpine Gaul. It did hit some of our units, which we've got to be careful of. And Numerius Valerius now is going to command in this one. We'll definitely... Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea to put the ballista in front of the general because the last thing we want is for him to <laughs> get caught on in it or to like fall and hit him. But here are some of the spearmen that we've got there and the rest of the front line. Okay, we might need to advance as well. Slightly. So let's move you here. And advance on up. At least rotate. And face them head on. So, Numerius Valerius. Um, he's gonna take an important role. He's one of my better commanders. To be fair, a lot of my older commanders have died. And the ones that <laughs> even conquered earlier territory have either died from all age or died in combat. Oh, misclick. But yeah, he fought in Lugaria. So he does have some battle experience up in the north. But this is his first time around fighting Carthaginians. Metellus has had some opportunity fighting Greeks. Okay, so we've got some shots going off here. And it's a decent hit. Oh my god, that didn't do any dent. Maybe I need to switch to a flammable round. It is more accurate with the stone, but if it doesn't make much of a punch, particularly on cavalry, it might not be worth it then. So we do have the range on them. It's just not as accurate. I kind of like that the ballista is not reliable. Because, particularly in Rome 2, even in DEI, when they've been patched and nerfed slightly... They are very overpowered. <laughs> and it nearly turns every... If you've got one, it turns every offensive battle into a defensive one. Because the AI just wants to close the distance. But this time around, it's actually quite interesting. Because because it's so inaccurate, they're not actually charging against me. Even though this is offensive battle. It's not turning into a defensive one. Hmm. It's nearly not worth it. They're barely doing much damage. Which is probably good. Like, they, you shouldn't really have them for destroying units. You really should have them... Like, the point of having a Ballista, really, is so you can take settlements in one turn <laughs> and just, like, auto-resolve out, nearly. 
Okay, I just moved the general up there. It turned into a bluff charge. I thought we might be able to hit that missile unit hanging around there. Okay, we're going to have to march up forward if we can. And drop... Oh. Hang on, why aren't you moving? Why is that red? If I move up now, will it go? Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so the ballista is so big, it can't arc its shot up and over the, the tree line. <laughs> that's really quite cool. I wasn't expecting that. So there's actually, we can't push it further. So the terrain is actually giving me a disadvantage because the trees are so high. It might actually cause a huge forest fire anyway, you'd think. If it was to get those shots off there. <laughs> but we're slowly but surely moving up. And we get stuck into the Carthaginians again. But so far, now that we've got the entirety of Italy under our control, focusing all our efforts and money and funds on Sicily, we're making some progress. Because at the end of the day, Carthage is just not Sicily. They've also got North Africa. Um, I think they... The, I think they've made it so that um, the Numidians and the Carthaginians are allied permanently. I could be wrong. So that they can focus on the Romans and the Spanish and stuff. Yeah, I can't imagine what's going on in Iberia at the moment. Oh! Huge firing ballista shot there. Probably caused a bit of friendly fire, to be honest. <laughs> okay, now it's... Oh my god. I feel like it's hitting too many of my own boys, so I might have to hop there. Okay, we'll get this Astarte to try and flank around if we can. But even in, what was it, um, Vanilla Roma Serectum, from what I can remember, God, it's been like literally 10 years since I played the original. There is a Let's Play from 10 years ago on YouTube of me playing this game, believe it or not. Um... I might have been... I can't even remember. I must have been 15. <laughs> or 14, maybe even younger than that. 16, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the point I was trying to make, even though it's hilarious, um, that, from what I can remember, they did have territory. Like, even back then, I'm pretty sure that you owned Dyrachium in Epirus, and you also owned... A piece in Iberia as well. I wonder what the justification was for that. Not having that territory. Maybe just to make it a bit harder. Maybe overextend. Because I remember distinctly being like, Oh, these external territories are going to drag you into wars with Mac the Macedonians and the Iberians. So it's, either, it's actually better to get rid of them. Also, you have to deal with Hannibal, quite literally, in the first battle on the peninsula. But, so far, we're doing really quite well against the Carthaginians. And look at this, the Princapes are really holding their own. Finally, we're getting some decent units in. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even bother bringing... Oh, you need, you need Hastati. There's not much you really can do about it. I was like, oh, maybe I should have just focused on Princapes. Because <laughs> they're just so good. Oh, now they're in a full retreat. Good. So, a bit of a tip and trick for you guys. If you're doing your own Roman campaign on this mod, I'd recommend not going into Sicily at all. <laughs> Unless you can um, fund and field at least two full stacks. It might be different on the lower difficulties though. But we've had a really good victory there. We still lost about 600 or so, mostly Prinkapay. After the war is over, make alliances. Yeah, we haven't got too many, to be honest. I wish we could get a couple more. Okay, so now they've been pushed back. I guess we move my diplomat here to have a look. Oh, yes. Unless there's um, crazy garrison scripts, which there could very well be. Oh, there's an army there. We should have enough to actually at least take one or two pieces of territory eastward. I might actually march out of... Syracuse and maybe siege so we'll move here oh perfect my spy has opened the gates 
and we'll continue to send the pop back to mainland Italy. You used to be able to rush Marion form so easily because the population would only go to wherever the general is if they were garrisoned. You could like cheese it quite hard, but they've patched it in this Rome remaster. Yeah, I think we just drop the tax rate here. We send let's send everyone over. Like three full stacks. Even if there's three full stacks at spawn, we'll be fine. Um, actually, we might be able to attack this if we... Oh, we can if we move the Ballista out. Yeah, we don't need that. We can wait a turn and see how the AI reacts. Man, but even like Sicily, there's five regions here, <laughs> which is quite a lot. Okay, guys. Well, Carthage draws an army there. We have to keep an eye on. We'll move you up. So, welcome to the top of the turn. We'll be able to march Numerius Valerius in. So, no one, none of these generals are really high-ranking by the look of it. Okay, we might actually be able to... Oh, it's not gone in. We might be able to do a bit of a trick here. Hang on. So, what I'll do is I'll get Lucius Metellus to siege out Hanno inside... And then we'll get these two armies to squash the reinforcing one. Bro. <laughs> it just shows you that we've got armies. We can surge our way on through Sicily. But to be fair, we won a lot of battles in today's episode. But we also did actually trade with them quite hard earlier on in the campaign. So we'll get rid of you. Perfect. And now, once that siege equipment is built, Sicily will be fully under Roman occupation. We're making a bunch of money now, but it's not unsurprising because you do get a lot in even Vanilla Rome, to be honest. Okay, so the siege equipment has been built. And we might as well move in Valerius just to get those additional reinforcements. So let's march on in and get rid of Hanno, who's a pretty prominent Carthaginian commander as well. 6,000 Romans descend upon Lilybaeum. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Sicily is finally under our control. Oh my god, that was way too hard fought than what it should have been. And now we're making uh, 15,000 a turn. But yeah, that might seem a lot, but it's not really. Sending how much buildings cost in this game. So it's not even like unsurprising for you to get to like... Uh, 100 turns into the campaign and you're making 50,000 per turn. Do they want peace? We'll send the diplomats straight to Carthage. No, they don't. Okay. Well, I've played for about an hour here today and I think we'll wrap things up. Well, unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. We've had a hell of an episode. We have basically reaped the rewards from the last uh, four episodes. So we've finally gone and taken Sicily. So if you're still enjoying this series, I'd really much appreciate it if you could leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. So we're going to keep our generals in our Roman cities to build up those traits. We're currently putting absolutely everything into the economy while recruiting as well. We're quite stable that we can build and construct and now we're starting to hopefully snowball a bit. But however, we, we might have taken too long to expand, to be honest. Although we've got... Italy and Sicily under our control. Wynn might not be able to make a dent into the Greek world, depending who owns it. Like, it's a battle royale between uh, the Greeks, the Macedonians, and the Spartans. Maybe we need to go east to help our, our counterparts. There must be some rebel territory nearby us, maybe over the Swiss Alps into Retii territory. We could push into Illyria. Uh, should we make some investments into Gaul? I don't know. Or should we continue upon the initiative and push into Carthage as they don't want peace? Do we secure Sardinia and Corsica or do we push for mainland Carthage? But the thing is as well, conquering Car just saying conquering Carthage is easier said than done just due to the public order uh, problems. Because we're going to have to turtle up here in Sicily. Because although most of the eastern part of the island here is Greco-Roman, the west is Carthaginian. So, we're going to have to build some Greek shrines and bring everyone on over. But so far, 
We're doing okay. We're, it's, we're slowly progressing. Two steps forward. One step back. So we're still getting a little bit there. But it's just taking us a little time. Anyway, enough rambling from me. I've got to play the outro now and say thank you to this one's patrons and channel members. But yeah, thanks guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I've had an absolute blast. And stay tuned for more videos on the channel. We've got a bunch of content coming out. Campaigns, Total War Battles as well. Uh, like online multiplayer ones. But anyway, I'm really enjoying this one. And I hope you guys are as well. Anyway, I've got to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. And stay tuned for episode 5 coming out the exact same time tomorrow. Okay guys, I've got to play the outro now. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.